Uh, this is on uh, page 19 of The Sun. What about this? Um, your handwritten lyrics for Wonderwall apparently going under the hammer today. Um, expected to fetch up to two and a half grand. Yeah, well, I can assure you now that those aren't the lyrics because... Are they the lyrics? No, because... Is that the real I, thing? Well, no, because when, when I... Well, it's my handwriting. I'll tell you what, what's happened here. When all those... No one had heard the songs when we went to do Morning Glory. So it's one of the great regrets of my life. I We didn't know what Oasis was about to become. And I threw all those lyrics in the bin. I just didn't think anything <laughs> of them when they were all finished. They are ones that were written out for... It would have been for some tour afterwards or something like that. They're not the original lyrics because they, they've gone in the bin. Because they're, the original lyrics, you would think, We'd oh, go for a hell of a lot more than two and a half thousand quid. <laughs> I'd be pretty upset if it was a couple of grand. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely my handwriting, but I've seen that. I think that they're, uh, when you see them, I think they're photocopies. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that you see knocking around on the internet that it's terrible when you meet people and they say, oh, I bought this on the thing, and you just you say, "That's I'm sorry, but that's yeah, that's not the real one. And like, well, hang on a minute. The guy, the, the guy in the pub said it was, you know. But No, we're setting a, an argument in here, Wonderwall. Who is it about? Well, uh, right, I heard you going on about this in the in the thing when it when I, when I wrote it, uh, and then when we did the cover and it came out. There's a there's a girl on the front of the cover who used to work in creation offices. Um, oh God, I can't remember her name now. Anyway, she was like long blonde there. She looked like my then wife Meg Matthews. And and then when uh, you know doing the interviews for the thing and the, you know, they said, oh, is this just about your wife? And how do you say no? You know, so I was like. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's not about it's not about anyone in particular. It's no. about it's about just a generic kind of, which is why it's so popular. I guess it's a generic kind of. Mm. So yeah, I mean, most of my great songs are about the universal truths of life. They're not really they're not really that autobiographical. Most of my know. great songs, I love that. I know. I've only done I about. Mean, eight. Are you rightly really proud of what you've written? Oh God, there's not. Look, there's not a day goes by where. I don't hear it on the radio or get asked about. It's like young lads, you know, young lads who were babies when we split up, you know, will come up to you and they're into it so much. Do you know what I mean? And it's like changed their lives. They got it from their older brother and all that kind of thing. And it's a, honestly, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It makes me think that we did something really, really timeless and special. Mm. And actually we did something that none of us, we're actually aware of at the time you know we were just in a band and we did this thing and we were just going from one thing to the next and um since we broke up you have a lot of time to take a step back and you know and when i do my own gigs they're they're, they're great but then when you do those songs there's there's, there's something else you know? yes yeah. it's, it's like when you go and see them you know the greats like mccartney for instance it's like and he does his wing stuff and his new stuff and it's great but then when he does you know the stuff. It's kind, kind of, of like well it's a, it's it's a it together. Yeah. So that's a great question for you, Noel. If Noel was to take three tracks to the Noel Gallagher time capsule, what oh, would it? What oh, would mine? You, yeah. Supersonic. Uh, my flanks. My favorite Oasis tune because of how it came to be. It just we were in a studio one night, and Alan McGee wanted us to record this particular song for our debut single, and we weren't getting it right. And somebody said, "Just go write a new one." And I went in the back and I wrote it in about half an hour. We recorded it in one night and it was a timeless little piece of magic. And then Don't Look Back in Anger for what it's become. You know, when I was when I wrote that song one night in Paris, if I'd have known what it would become, I'd never have finished it. Because how, 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 how could you even write a song that, you know, 30 years later has turned into some kind of hymn, mm. you know? Uh, and then... I would always go for a new one. There's a song on my new album called Dead to the World, which is which is pretty personal, which I love. But, yeah, I mean, I've written so many great songs. That <laughs> you hard, have. It's hard to choose. You have. <laughs> which brings me to this. Are you going to get back with him? <laughs> well, I put it out there. He won't call me. I mean, he should call me because he's like, he's forever going on about it. You'd have thought by now he'd have a, like some kind of plan and... You know, he should, he should, he should, if he's got a plan, he should get someone to, call. he doesn't have to speak to me. He won't speak to me. I know he won't speak to me. He's a coward. Right. So he should get some of his people, his agent, <laughs> That'll call, help it. To, to call, to call my, to call my people and say, look, this is what we're thinking. And then we'll have a conversation about it. Until then, 
he's been a little bit disingenuous with his. Do you want to do it? I mean, with fans. I mean, I'm. I, I, I was never an Oasis fan. I've become actually more appreciative of your music as the years have gone past. I knew there was always something wrong. No, 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 you. mate. Listen, I didn't didn't listen to it. I mean, Jim was a Blur fan. <laughs> always a Blur fan. <laughs> I, I was a little bit more Richard Ashcroft. But oh, I. Yeah. But but and I was always the specials were my thing. That's why right, I got yeah, back yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not caring about you. Great. No, no, no. But I'm saying to him, does he want to get back? Did you want to do it? I've always said that you know things are best left in the past. But if he if he is the thing with Liam is you read these things every day. He's saying on his thing, it's happening, it's happening. So he gets people's hopes up right all over the world, and then I get asked about it, and I have to look like saying, well, it's news, and I have to look like I'm you know dropping a a big foot on it. Call me, call me, right? Let's see what you've got to say. Why won't he? Well, I don't know. Why don't you get him in? Why don't you get well, him he was, in? He was in here not that long ago, and he was brilliant right. in this place. He was chatting to everybody, and I have thought of asking him. Yeah, you um, should do. You should so, do. People ask me enough, but I mean, I, he's... Uh, well, you can't do anything more than that. I. It's for, 30 years of definitely my, maybe next year. For so my, it, why not? I suspect that he doesn't want to do it, but he just likes saying that he does want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Because he's got his own thing going on. He's selling out Nebworth and all that kind of thing. What does he want to share it with me for? I'm cool with what I'm doing. He's smashing it. You know, why be disingenuous with people? You know, you know it's not happening. And if if, if, if he's good, if you've got a plan, give me a ring. So you're open to it if he gets I'm in open touch to a phone. I'm open a to a phone call for a conversation. Yeah. Other than that, stop playing with the kids. It's not fair on the fans. It's not fair. See, I have a man right here who puts people back together, like the specials, as he as he oh, mentioned. Right. So, come on. You could be the Perez de Quellier of this deal. <laughs> yeah, but I'd have to be invested, <laughs> you see. I'm not invested. I think they were a wonderful band. I think Noel was a great songwriter, but I wasn't an Oasis fan, so it's wasted on me. What utter oh, nonsense, isn't it? Well, I mean... Simon it's honest. Like, like, it's like, honest. Like, no. like I say, I always something that was new, something that was wrong about Simon, and that, and that is it. Thank you so much. It's I been an absolute you, pleasure. I know I'm, you listen to I this I have thing. to say, I listen to the show every day, and that guy there, I, do, I mean, I text him with hand-clapping emojis quite a lot because what he does say is... And it's a weird thing with Simon because when he's going in... On other clubs, you're like, yes, get in. And when he's going in your club, you're like, oh, come on, mate. You know, back <laughs> in. But uh, I have to say, there's a lot of people. I go on the terraces with the City fans, and he's got a lot of respect from the football community. That's I, kind I of know that. Thank you, mate. That's yeah. kind. Lovely. Good for you. No, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it has been brilliant having you here. Uh, good luck with the tour. Thank you very much. I'm coming to San Diego, City fans. Yeah, yeah, they know it. They know it now, don't they? Chrissy really knows it. She's gone back to bed. No Gallagher <laughs> with us live this lunchtime. We're back tomorrow at 10. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.